Okay, so before anything, Signal is a pretty good private and secure messaging application, but it isn't without its flaws, which I'll talk about in a minute. Even if it was perfect though, having all of your eggs in the Signal basket wouldn't be a good idea because then it becomes a single point of failure. The more people that use Signal, or any other private messaging application for that matter, the more attention it will get from hackers and government agents trying to compromise it. In fact, we've seen that various Big Brother agencies have been subpoenaing Signal for user data recently, and Signal does comply with the request, although I'm pretty sure it's under duress and it appears that the only user data that Signal stores about its users is an account ID, which I assume is just uh, the hash of a phone number that you use to sign up to Signal with, and a timestamp of when you last logged in um, and a timestamp of when your account was created. Now, I don't think that this data in particular is extremely useful to law enforcement. Uh, maybe at most they could take the account creation date and try to associate that with your Google account from whenever you downloaded Signal. But even then, I don't know how useful this data would be. And so I wouldn't be surprised if they tried to escalate their attempts to gather data from Signal users. Uh, so let's speculate on some ways that the government might go about doing that. Uh, and I'll just remind you guys that this is only a hypothesis. I don't have any insider knowledge from Signal or the government about how this might go down. This is just maybe how I would try to compromise Signal if I was in charge of the alphabet agencies. Uh, so Signal is open source. But if you make new commits to the software without publishing those changes, then the change code is technically private because people can't view it themselves. Well, this happened to Signal, at least with the server-side code before from April 2020 uh, to March 2021. And during that time, uh, there were many commits to the code base that were not available to be seen. Like you can see, uh, this is one of the weeks uh, that it was still private and it takes up an entire page in GitHub. So lots of changes made in that time frame. Uh, now, obviously, this is all available uh, now because it's right here. I'm able to uh, look at it. Uh, Moxie released uh, basically a year of source code uh, all at once and you know explained why they were behind and that there were no shenanigans during the time that the source wasn't available. Uh, and Signal has been much better at publishing uh, changes to the source code since then. And even if every three-letter agency were to descend on Signal at the same time during one of these commit blackouts and have a full glow stick rave in the data center where their servers are stored and this code is being run, the most that the feds could do would be to make the servers start storing the encrypted messages because Signal is end-to-end -end encrypted. So nothing plain text should be hitting their servers from us. And because Signal has forward secrecy built into its protocol, each message is going to have a different key that they would have to crack. And unless they have some giant alien quantum supercomputer at Area 51, I think we're all fine. I don't think that they're going to be able to crack a significant amount of messages to really uh, have too much impact. As it stands right now, Signal doesn't actually store that much data about their users. But what if they did? You see, Signal has been working on adding a cryptocurrency aspect to their app. It's not something that's enabled by default. It's something that you have to go into the settings and enable yourself. But the problem is this cryptocurrency called MobileCoin is pretty crap as far as cryptocurrencies go. So the miners or validators of this crypto, uh, they have to mine it with Intel SGX chips. Uh, which really narrow the scope of the hardware that you can use. Usually you want uh, cryptocurrencies to be able to be mined on many different kinds of hardwares, you know, hardware that's going to be widely distributed amongst many, many people in the world. Uh, but with MobileCoin, obviously you have to use Intel chips uh, and you can only use uh, like only certain models of Intel CPUs uh, support the software guard extensions. And even if you do happen to have this hardware, you still can't just go and mine it and be a validator yourself because MobileCoin runs on a private blockchain. So you have to get approval from 
them, you know, Signal or whoever's in charge of mobile coin uh, to become a validator in the first place, just like with Facebook's Libra coin. Uh, and to top it all off, the mobile coin supply is pre-mined, which means that there isn't some block reward that the validators are going to get for validating, like with Bitcoin. Uh, but since they have this privileged position of, you know, limited validators or only a few pre-approved validators, uh, that starts to open up this, the possibility for some shenanigans to occur, right? For some outside person to pay a few of these validators uh, to start engaging in blockchain shenanigans for them. Uh, so the tokenomics of this crypto are really garbage, but as we've seen with the rise of shit coins and normies getting into crypto, tokenomics no longer matters because what people care about now is making money with crypto, right? Uh, and, you know, some shit coin going to the moon at a 100x, you know, getting Elon Musk to tweet about you is far more profitable than actually having solid technology behind your tokens. Uh, so for those of us who are aware of what crypto should be, mobile coin is at best just another useless token that's basically holding down signal. But the real worry with this is if a cryptocurrency does get embedded into Signal, then they may be forced to comply with know your customer regulations. And then one day you might try to sign into Signal only to realize that you can't do anything else in the app until you scan your driver's license or you enter your social security number, just like you have to do with PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, or any other application that lets you send money to other people because that's one of the key things that might get you KYC regulated. Uh, now again, this is all just speculation, uh, but the more popular Signal becomes, the more likely these scenarios start to become. And in the meantime, there are forks of Signal that you can try that don't have the payments features built in at all. Uh, and so I think they're at a lower risk of having this KYC brought upon them. One of them is Signal FOSS. So this is probably the closest in functionality to Signal, uh, but as the name implies, it is completely FOSS. It does not depend on uh, Google dependencies, the proprietary Google dependencies like regular Signal does. Uh, it's also available through F-Droid uh, as well. You can add the repo to it. In fact, if you have a uh, Android phone running F-Droid with you, you can just go ahead and scan that um, QR code there and it should add it. Uh, and then next, is Molly, which is considered to be a hardened version of Signal. Um, so there is Molly and there's Molly Foss. Uh, if we go to get it on F-Droid. So these are the two different QR codes for that. And again, you can pause it and scan it if you want. Uh, as the name implies with Molly Foss, of course, it's completely free and open source. Uh, and the regular Molly does have some proprietary dependencies. And if we go over to the features page, we can see some of these security enhancements uh, that this has over Signal. So things like um, protecting your database with a uh, passphrase lock, RAM shredding, and also support for routing your messages over Tor, which I think is the most interesting. Uh, it does require Orbot though, so just keep that in mind. Uh, it's not like necessarily built into Molly. You have to have an additional app uh, to get that working. And another great thing about Molly and Molly Foss and Signal Foss is that they're all compatible with the original Signal app. So if you manage to convince your normie friends to get Signal, you don't have to go back and now convince them to get an Android phone and then install F-Droid and you know, add the repos and install these applications because I know that would be way too much to convince them to do. Um, now, the reason that all of these are compatible is because they are all still using Signal servers. So if you really don't trust Signal and you don't even want to use their servers, uh, then you could consider using Session, uh, which is a fork of Signal that relies on decentralized servers in the Loki network. However, Session has far fewer uh, features than Signal does. Uh, it's pretty much only good for sending text and pictures, in my experience. 
Uh, then of course there's Matrix, which is something completely different from Signal and uh, should be saved uh, for another video. Uh, but in the meantime, keep an eye out on Signal to make sure that they don't get too shady. Check out these different forks. Uh, I actually started using Molly myself a few days ago, uh, and so far everything is good. Uh, I'll likely do a more in-depth review on it. Uh, another day, but again, it's basically just a uh, signal with these added features to it. So uh, not really a whole lot to review or to learn, I guess, if you've already uh, seen a signal review or anybody do a signal review for that matter. But yeah, I'm liking Molly so far. As always, practice good OPSEC no matter what apps you're using. That is always the most important thing to maintain your privacy and have a great rest of your day.